Okay, everyone. Welcome to the rest of my life. Which is the name that I have given to this series of YouTube things. Um, heading to work after a three-day weekend. Very good weekend. Got a lot done. And um, just... Oh, my God, I love three-day weekends because you spend that first day just getting used to being off. And then you got two days to feel good. Also, my new meditation technique, which is holding the exhalation. Not as long as possible, but just holding it for a little while before going into the exhalation. I mean, I'm going, going into the inhalation. Really makes me feel good. It makes me feel so clean and clear and energized and calm. And uh. All right, the name of this installment is Antonio Sara. I think that's how you pronounce it. Spanish painter, born in 1908, died in 1998. For some reason categorized as a surrealist, I wouldn't say that. I'd say more gestural abstraction. But anyway, um, spent the weekend looking at his work online. Just so inspiring. Um, I couldn't remember his name, and I kept looking up uh, Anthony Typees. And uh, I kept looking and thinking, why am I not finding what, I, what I'm looking for? And then I remember, no, no, it's the other guy. Um, and Tony Typees, I respect the work ethic and I you know, respect him as an as a artist, but um, his work is hit and miss with me. There's a photograph of his studio or workspace online and uh, oh I love it concrete concrete floor big work table high walls uh, high ceiling but the work is a little I don't know but oh there's a video of uh, Antonio Salva's uh, daughter um, showing you around the museum of her father's work. God, I'd love to have that one day after I'm dead. Of course, the world will come to an end before that can be achieved. And in the old days, that was sort of a half-joking comment, but now I, I, I really mean it. You know, I... I <laughs> I used to like George Carlin, but I got sick of his uh, anti-human stance. And that whole spiel he gave about um, the planet is fine, it's the people on it that are fucked. Well, okay, understand this. When we say the world is going on down the tubes, we don't mean that the ball of rock spinning in space is going to be torn to fragments. What we mean is its viability as a uh, biosphere for our species to thrive is going away. That's what we mean. I, 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 ugh. Anyway, so taking Antonio Sara is our starting point. Um, it is an abiding theme with me in my work that I try to combine mm, messy messy work gestural abstraction uh, slop with cartoon based figuration um meaning it's cartoon based in the initial um, pencil drawing that I put on the canvas but then it's developed as much as I can with my um, 
um, technical powers to look like it should look. Every painting is developed to its utmost and any painting can be saved. Many times I get started on a painting and um, right after I put the first layer of paint down I get um, doubts because I realized the initial composition was weak. I didn't spend enough time thinking it through, planning it out. I love, I, I wish I had the freedom to look at this asshole pulling out right in front of me. Anyway, I wish I had the freedom conceptually to paint completely gibberish, complete slop, like Saura did. But I'm not a full-time painter. Even if I am a professional, I have to go to work and um, at this stupid job. So I have to make every canvas count. So I try to cram in everything I like on every single canvas. Like a little bit of grattage, throw that in. I think that's one of the reasons I put in the compositions, I put other paintings in the painting. And that way I feel like I'm getting more bang for the buck. Um, in the video of Marina Sara, Sara going around the museum, she's just, she's in, there's like a, I guess like a office area, and there's just big cabinets of, um, well, I guess what, you, what we used to call map drawers, um, big, long, shallow drawers full of... I guess they're prints, because they're, they're multiple copies. Prints of her father's work for sale. I don't know if they sell them in a gift shop there or they mail them to people, but God, what an organization. Oh, and she climbs up on this ladder to get a book off this huge wall of books. And, and she's comparing the um, the illust the, the pictures of his of her father's work in the book to the prints I don't I don't know why it should be accurate I don't know what the hmm. I I think I work best um, when I conceive the paintings as part of a series. So, um, a couple months ago I decided to go all out and create what I call a super series, which will have individual series within it. And it's 16, it's a, it, the overall series is called Rooms, and there's 16 groups of 8, so 100, 128 paintings total. And it, the first one was um, Rooms in the Morning, which I finished uh, two weeks ago, I think it was. And the current one is called Department Store Rooms. And um, it's working out really well. I really like the last one I did because it's sort of, sort of a Christmas scene. Little kid sitting on the floor in front of the presents under the tree. When I was a kid, Christmas morning was little bitty kid. Christmas morning was always wonderful because my parents fed me the whole Santa Claus line, and I clung to that way longer than I should have. And. 
and uh, my wife and I never told our kids that shit. In fact, we never celebrated Christmas with our kids because we're not Christians, and so we didn't see the point. I have some atheist friends who still celebrate it because they, they, they like the tradition, they like the whole uh, tinsel of it. But I just can't go along with something that I don't believe in. But getting all that stuff, that's what it was about. It wasn't about a family get-togethers or celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior. It was about getting the stuff. Toys and games. Especially when you're a little kid because you don't know what you want. So your parents decide what you want. And you're surprised. Oh, wow, what's this? And um, I'll tell you, back, Jesus, this would have been 20, 27 years ago, roughly. Um, a friend and I, uh, back, this is back when I was a heavy, heavy drinker. And um, a friend of mine and I would get loaded on booze and they would, they, we would hit as many stores as possible in town and shoplift a bunch of crap blind drunk and um, a couple of times I would crash over his place on the sofa and waking up the next morning lift my head open and look down at the floor and it was like Christmas morning because there are all these CDs and uh, books and just all kinds of stuff and you're like wow Look what alcohol Santa Claus brought me. Oh my God. A couple of years ago, uh, my dad came to visit and um, I said, you know, it's really amazing how good my kids are. Just what straight arrows they are and when you consider what a rotten kid I was and just how what a black sheep and he amazed me by responding well maybe they had better parents and the reason it amazed me is because any time that I've offered any criticism over the years even as a grown up my parents' response was just so vociferously uh, against anything I, I said uh, critical. You know, how dare you? We gave you everything we, you, you, we, we spent as much money on you as possible. And all this shit took you to church every time the doors were open. And for him to say that just stunned me. A couple, um, well, six months ago, I think it was, my dad was driving me to work, and he, out of the blue, offered this apology for being so mean when I was a kid. I didn't know what to say. You know, one of the biggest regrets, one of the worst feelings you can have is knowing that you disappointed your kids in some way. And I have terrible, jagged knife edges of memory that stab at me sometimes out of the blue, remembering times I disappointed my kids or was mean to them. Or, you know, I you know, I work at the post office and I'll see uh, toys come through the mail, obviously going to some kid. And um, I'm like, oh God, I, I feel bad. I didn't do as much for my kids as I could have or spoil them as much as I could have. Um, you know, I went to this small private Christian Republican school and they had the most 
top-down authoritarian anti-child m- mindset possible. Um, the teacher I had in fifth grade, Miss, uh, God, what was her name? Hill. She was just adamant that coddling a child only leads to, leads to bad character. You must be hard and tough and mean as possible to make them into strong citizens, strong warriors for the Lord. Oh, time to hit the cruise control here. I hope this is a good week. They changed the program we have to use for printing up labels on the containers at work, and it's a little clumsy. On the application, on the program, they have redundant page after redundant page of COVID supplies labels. As if you have to have a special label for COVID supplies for different towns. First of all, we don't get COVID supplies, and we certainly don't get entire containers of COVID supplies. It's totally redundant, and it's just a typical example example of overkill on the behalf of management. Oh, this guy's on my ass now. He wants to go 80. Forcing me to go 70 to get around this guy in front of me so I can get back over into the slow lane so he can get around and have his good time with his Mercedes SUV. Mercedes never should have gotten into the SUV market. You know, the whole thing with Antonio Sauer's museum makes me wonder, how much money did he make during his lifetime? It's quite staggering. Because, you know, the work, if you go to Hobby Lobby today, you can see um, mass-produced stuff that has a similar feel. It's not quite so outre as, as, uh, as Sauer's work, but it makes you wonder, back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, was there enough of an appetite for that type of stuff to, to grant him a big annual income. Oh my god, I hate the shit at Hobby Lobby. What a tired, obvious pile of crap. You look at this shit, and it looks like it was done by people, obviously on an assembly line, you know. You paint four white daubs of paint here, and then the guy next to you will paint 15 green squares of paint here. Sweatshop. Oh my god. What a great weekend though. I every time I meditated over the weekend, I would feel so fantastic afterwards. I need to make it a regular thing. Because it's hard to sit, make yourself sit down for 10, 15 minutes and get in that mindset and just dedicate yourself to watching your breathing. Because, you know, it's, it's easy, relatively easy, to make yourself go through 15 minutes of lifting weights and, and crunches and stuff. Because you, it's hard. But to do something that's subtly easy but requires concentration. That's a little different. Anyway, 
approaching the end of the show, and this is going to be the format from now on. I know it has limited appeal compared to making sarcastic remarks about movies or pointing out the corruption in government, but this is it. And as long as YouTube allows me this platform, I'm going to keep doing it. Plus, you get a little piece of artwork to look at. So let me check the... Ah, doing pretty good here. All right. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye.